There is a place deep inside where you are never alone. And you found it here in the Psychic Zone. In this episode of the Psychic Zone, Todd Siegel will share with us some of his past cases. Also, we'll go into some detail and his relations with the clients and the police. In the Psychic Zone. Todd, what would you like to start off with? One of the ones was last year, I believe, there was a missing hiker in Hawaii, a young woman. She was in her early 30s. Um, For those of you out there, you might remember it was all over the news. I was asked to do it. There was a whole bunch of other, I guess, intuitives and psychics uh, putting, give, submitting their information, and I wrote mine down, and I sent it off to them. Now, there was so much going on, so many newspapers, so much uh, media and stuff that I, I never really heard from them. But one of the people on my page said, uh, hey, Todd, they found her. You better go take a look at, at the article of where she was found, her statement. And um, I looked at that and, you know, I wasn't really expecting much. And then I looked at mine. I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is incredible. Um, <clears throat> it was right on the money. Um because there were so many theories that, you know, maybe she went missing, she was abducted, or, you know, maybe somebody murdered her, or this and that. And my description, I remember, uh, I saw her laying there by the waterfall. There was a river, and she was on a rock ledge. And then, and I gave a description, it was very hard to pinpoint, I don't have a navigator that tells me oh it's these degrees and this coordinate but i gave an estimate of how many miles up the park and which side of the park um gave a description of where she was before this happened and was giving a a description of you know her condition and this and that and felt it was imperative well, that was right on the money, and um, well, but I never I, heard, I, I never heard anything after that. Um, I have a question. How did okay? So what happened? Was it just a call for all psychics to uh, give your ideas, or did you actually get contacted by someone? One of my clients reached out to me and said, "Look, here's here's their information. Why don't you? Because they called all psychics, so." Yeah. Why don't you give them your information and, uh, you know, see, you know, see if you get it to them. I actually did hear back from them and they said that they did get my information. Yeah. So. Can, you tell, can you tell me something? Um, tell us something about how is that process of discovery um, in your own, let's say, in your mind, in your mind's eye, in your in the psychic zone? Um, what what was your process with the lady by the waterfall? Um, I think the first thing I did mention something about the boyfriend, her boyfriend, because there was all sorts of rumors. I couldn't help. I don't want to see information, but there were all sorts of rumors that, you know, maybe he was involved with this and this and that. So I was going on. I remember about him I was saying, well, there's a little bit of a relationship going on with somebody that he knows. So I'm looking at I'm looking at the people he associates with and I'm looking at his personality and and what's going th- through his emotions. But then I said, I'm not going there because I actually I do see a good relationship between them. I I feel that there's honesty here. I didn't feel like you know, he was lying. So I said, let me not go there, but let me go back to the trail. They weren't even sure if she was at the trail um, because I believe they might have found her car, <clears throat> but no no other evidence that she was trying to contact them and this and that. Mm-hmm. But I did. I think I did feel that she might have hit her head or something, which she never said in her statement. I didn't think she got knocked out, but I, I think she tumbled, you know, mm. and uh, I know she hurt her leg. But um, 
So Done. You, that point was it. incredible. That was, that was uh, she, uh, I forgot, what was it, 16 days or something she was out there? Wow. But it wasn't until about, oh, just recently, I think it was this January, uh, that I got a call from a client to to work on a missing person case in Hawaii. Oh. It was uh, about a man that went missing. Now, I felt the worst about this. I gave her descriptions, but there was very heavy terrain where we think he went missing. It's not something that she can do. It's something the investigators have to do. You know, she she's... Um, she, she can't hike through this kind of terrain. I think they need helicopters and search dogs and that kind of thing. But she did tell me that the reason she came to me was from the work I did on the missing hiker oh. in Hawaii. So at least there was some acknowledgement that actually people were looking because she said first she got a first hand look at it and she was like, wow. So that's why she hired me to work on the missing man that's currently I still under investigation. And this was a um, a person that you were not even familiar with, right? You didn't know this girl, but she reached out to you for the second. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know her, but um, she's um, actually, uh, I think, a leader in her field. I think she's involved in politics a little bit out in, in mm. Hawaii. So I think she's a little bit of a higher up um, and very, very nice woman. Investigators only have so much to go on. And sometimes or a lot of times they rely on people such as yours with your abilities. You know. And well, not always. They're yeah. they're very <laughs> some of them are very uh, close to it. Mm. I think there's a little bit more now, but no, a lot of them are very close to it. In fact, uh, just yesterday, I was uh, asked by a client who's come to me several times to help in a investigation for her uh, missing uh, missing relative. I, I forget who she was, um, but in associated with her sister or somebody. And uh, this is, uh, I believe, up in Maryland. Well, to make a long story short, they didn't want to have anything to do with me because of their religious beliefs mm -hmm. and, and I guess their personal beliefs about psychics and this and that. So I did, at the end, she kept begging me, she kept begging me, give me something, give me, so I gave her something. I gave her a, a kind of an estimate of location. Um, and I didn't say anything else, but it ended up being that it was a very similar distance that they found her body compared to what I gave her. But see, wow. I could have done a lot more if I had confidence in my from, work. You're you saying know. from the, uh, the, the, the team of people that are asking or looking, right? If they're working with you instead of against you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it's frustrating. I get I get tons and tons of letters um, that go to my secretary, uh, people all over the world. Uh, can you help with this missing case? Can you help with this missing case? And and I can't just give them information. I have to work with the people who are on the ground actually looking. Yeah, because otherwise it, it does no good. Yeah, well, as, as you said before, that there's so so much information you need to, to be able to pinpoint things instead of being so vast. Like, yes, okay, there's missing people all over the world. Which one am I picking up on? I need to, to know. And you have to actually have an okay. Maybe it's a, a pact with the universe. They have to be okay with you to even investigate type of thing. I'm, I have to. I have to have their confidence in me. Um, I don't have to have full approval. They don't have to be firm believers. Mm -hmm. uh, I just need them to be open, open and kind uh, in their demeanor. Um, and I, I have, you know, I, it, it was very frustrating in the beginning because of the lack of openness with some, some of the investigators. But right now, I established myself uh, big enough to where 
that they won't, don't want to go with that. I just don't take it personal. I'm just like, okay, on to the next. I've got enough cases to work yeah. on. Um, yeah, can and, you go back into the one? You told me one once about the uh, a, a, a suicide, I think it was, or a, a, a man who's uh, dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, this, this one kind of crosses over between a person who's alive and dead. Um, yeah, that's And how the person who who dies can actually communicate with me to show me a location. He didn't tell me, yeah. but, but he, he described the scene, the setting. Where was, and, was this? Yeah. What, what year was this? And when, um, where was this? Oh, this is an old one. Um, yeah. This one was probably eight, eight or nine years ago. Um, when I was living in Massachusetts, and the location happened to have been towards uh, the eastern shore, up in a very wooded area. Now, the man, I never heard from the man again, um, because this was his uh, personal friend. There was also things he had to deal with, because there were children left over from all of this. So this man was emotionally distraught. He had a lot of issues and he also had kids. So it's understandable. I never heard from him again, but when I, when I did the investigation, he was very grateful and, and you know, whatever. But I remember it was a real hike. I was searching areas, searching areas. And then all of a sudden I came upon this one area and I said, Oh, I see his car parked here. They confirmed it. They said, yes, this is the area. So I went to the map. I went to the actual street. And um, his car was parked there. And I was just going through, going through. And I said, I see this hillside where I'm seeing the light through the trees. He's just sitting there. And he, he, they said, is he communicating with you? I said, yes, but I'm not sure he's alive. Mm. Um and they finally got the police up there. This investigation went on four or five days, I think. And you were working with the investigators? I was working with his best friend, oh, friend. who was, who was uh, relaying the information to the police. Wow. I also described uh, this guy's brother, uh, who had a very kind of a negative temperament. Uh, people associated with him. I tried to give him clues that ring a bell... Um, and what I'm doing is I'm kind of ruling out some of the suspects, you know, some of the people who, who could do them harm, this and that. But then I kind of hone into his, his personality and, and I was just feeling very down. And so I, I knew that there was something going on with him. And so it ended up, I, I believe he hung himself up in the woods and committed suicide and, um, that was that was one of my earlier cases of uh that's surprising for you that you were actually actually there in th maybe even looking through his own his eyes that he was showing you things because you were in, in i would say an astral plane of some sort uh, uh, uh traveling in in this uh world of well, that you're seeing with him. i don't i don't see i i don't have all the answers of um of, of death and and where exact what exactly happens, but I do I do have I do have a pretty good good idea of of the process involved in the transition. So when a lot of times uh, I'm working with clients on uh, maybe a husband or a wife who who's on their last days, so they're, they're, we know they're going to die. And uh, recently I was working on one, uh, somebody's mother, and as I, <clears throat> she transitioned to death, I, I, I was doing readings for them, I mean, just days, you know, or hours before her transition, and transition all of a sudden, uh, stop breathing, gone, and then I see her walking around the house. <laughs> Mm. And I, I, I see her kind of like this little little window of eyes that's, that's going through into the kitchen, into the living room. She's seeing people there that she knows. So it's really, um, I just did one today, actually, for, for somebody who lost her, her mom. 
um, you know, and people wonder, they said, oh, well, you know, this guy probably, he gets lucky once in a while or he does this uh, kind of thing once in a while and this and that. No, it happens every single day, uh, whether I'm working on a court case. Um, <laughs> you know, it's all different. It's kind of, um, uh, I'm, I'm working on different types of cases every single day that give me clarity as far as what happens during the transition of death or what happens, uh, you know, with people's emotions. But death, I can tell you, it's, it's a very, um, it, it can be a very freaky thing. Now, sometimes you don't get a person's energy coming through right away. It's almost like they're going through kind of like a reality check. Um, I, I go down, you know, I, I've been to a hospital before. I don't like going to them. Uh, I was visiting somebody or I forgot what I was doing there. And as I'm sitting in the lobby, I'm seeing ghosts walking by. I'm seeing people who pass their, they don't look unhappy. They're just, they, they, I see them walking in their robes and different things like that. So it feels like there's some kind of transition time that we go through uh, after we die. And don't forget, we're not one body anymore. We're our spirit is kind of infinite. That's how you can die and be be with your um, son and, and also be over with your daughter or with, um, you know, an in-law. Or you, you could be transitioning into a new life. Your spirit is um, not just this one concentrated matter like your body is here on Earth. Your spirit is everywhere. And, and it's a combination of many beings all in one yeah that's interesting it's like when when you find someone well you know how you go through life and you meet people it seems like the veil between these two the spirit world and the material world is getting a lot thinner i mean there's this a spirit that you feel it's not just their personality that you like there's something else where you feel that you're part with them you feel that you are them in a sense it's it's, well, it's yeah nice. You know, we experience these things here on, you know, on Earth, yet only by certain circumstances we discover them. Uh, for instance, people who go through near-death experiences um, oftentimes are completely changed after that experience. They're, they are no longer the same person they were. They the a lot of times they don't hold on to anything anymore. Uh, they feel freer. Um, we're we're very um, we're in bondage to our um, emotions and how uh, you know our our body also uh, holds back our emotions. I mean, people who have depression, okay, or anxiety. We understand through science that this is not just, you know, hey, don't be depressed, feel better. But they're saying this is a chemical response from the body. So, it, you know, we've we've come a long way in science to understand that the body is part of our emotional system, you know. Um, and this often happens with people who are about to pass who... Uh, you know, I, I get I get this all the time. You know, look, mom, mom has been hospitalized. She's really bitter. She's very angry. She's not herself. Um, you know, our our body and how we feel um, coincide. Yeah, they coincide with with our emotions. Like you're saying that our body and the mind, the spirit. You know, it's 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 all intertwined. The heart, the mind, and and so when one's out of whack, it, it's either maybe for a reason to learn something, the spirit saying, hey, buddy, you got to got to learn something here. Or it's uh, self, you know, indulgence or self sabotage because we do that to ourselves sometimes. And so I think that depression and all that necessary is not a bad thing or a good thing. It's, it's just something to keep an eye on that. It's a, just a chemical change in your body so when you go through it near death 
and you said, wow, I, okay, I, I'm paralyzed or whatever now, but I have a whole different attitude towards life and you could be all of a sudden happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, what people, as somebody asked me the other day on, on my Facebook page, I, I was doing a blog. So, you know, I asked people, I said, what would you like to know about? And, um, so they gave me a lot of, uh, different answers, really good answers. Uh, one of them was, how do I deal with the feelings uh, of what I go through? And it was a very good question because I knew what she was talking about. Um, I, I feel things extremely deep sometimes and to the point where, um, you know, people, people come to me about somebody who died and, and, I just feel this overwhelming amount of, of emotions and this and that. But, um, you know, I kind of stop myself. I kind of limit myself not to get too involved with it. And I can't always communicate to the person I'm reading um, what I'm feeling from that person. But it's kind of my job to try to, you know, convey it to them, to interpret how they're feeling. Today was actually a similar day to that, um, speaking to a woman about her, her mother who passed. And, you know, it's a real, if somebody asks me, well, what are your readings like? It, it's, and when you're communicating, it's very subtle. It's not like, um, I don't go like, um, oh, well, your mom is asking where her hair dryer is. Um, look, do you know the keys for her car are in the hallway over there? Or I, I don't do that. I, it's very subtle, the messages that come through. Like, I'm a physical medium, so I was picking up all the sarcasm coming from mm -hmm. her mom. Like the little, the little ways that she uh, would, would add her two cents into a comment. And, and those things are what the client, when they're open to it, they're like, oh, my God, that sounds just like her, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I never uh, know what's coming. Um, it could be somebody who's, who's was very bitter in life. Uh, you never know. Yeah, it must be. Um, I mean, like you say, every day is a different experience of, and you don't know what's going to come through you to you, uh, what uh, person's going to come and ask ask for your assistance? You're like, you know, both a psychologist, <laughs> almost, yeah, and you know, and a psychic medium who, and it like I could understand like you can't explain. Okay, well, this is what's happening exactly in that world where you are okay accepted it. You finally remember for so long didn't even know or want to believe that. You, that you could do this until it just kept happening over and over and over till you had to say, okay, I got to pay attention to this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, well, some of the stuff blows me away, for instance, like missing dogs. I mean, I, I found so many that, um, I just don't remember all of them. And a lot of them aren't even written down on my website. I remember, uh, you know, a lot of dogs go missing in the fall. So I, I will get, several a week you know and i remember one week i found like all four of these dogs in one week and well, with the help of people looking it's not just me you know they've got to they've got to be looking and and but i remember this one dog rescue i did it was um she was up in rhode island and uh i think it was in the fall or it was kind of cold out one of the problems was the dog got off its leash, a leash up in the forest, uh, state forest, as they were hiking and uh, just took off. And the um, problem was it was hunting season, so there were hunters out there, so they were very worried. Um, her description was it was 14,000 acres of woods and trails, so it's a pretty big place. Uh, I believe this, if I remember, this went on for... Uh, four or five days. I mean, this went on for days. Uh, there were some areas near the hiking area that were uh, residential. Um, 
But I remember some of the, I, I do remember little tidbits. I have to give them clues that make sense. So I was, I was up in a certain area and I described an old old church. And, and you know, I said, there's this old church there. And she says, you know, it, it just amazes me how you would know this because nobody really knows or would know that there's a church up in this area. It's not marked in the map, but it's very old. And... Uh, described that and the dog was actually seen by somebody heading up there uh then i remember this one house that i was describing it had a very i said it had a very slanted roof a very sharp slanted roof uh i'm looking at the it was log or something like that and so the description came uh right there uh it, it was perfect description. Dog was seen up that way too. So I was just tracking this dog one place after another and um, went on for days. And you got to understand your pet dog. Um, you must be scared out of your mind. Your dog's out there. There's hunters out in the woods. There's yeah. gunshots going off. And, you know, is your dog hit or what's going on? But I'm trying to keep her calm, saying, no, I feel the dog's still alive. And, um, Eventually, they finally found the dog in the, the one of the areas, and um, I guess caught him. So, yeah. So it's like you're dealing with a person who's frantic, also going into your state to track the dog. I guess that's almost like remote viewing in a mm-hmm. sense. Oh through, yeah, through the landscape. Can you tell us something about? what that's like like you say the you, there's smells sometimes there's mm-hmm. uh, colors even and 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 oh there's... yeah i get colors um oh i was working on a a <clears throat> dog case um actually missing dog uh whew, this was maybe 5 or 6 years ago um for a woman who i know i think it was in atlanta or in, down in georgia um and there was a dog that went missing, and uh, it was all over town. It was everywhere. And I kept, I was helping her because she was actually driving around looking for the dog for her friend. Okay. And mm-hmm. so every place that, that I led her to, she was very open to the clues. And she confirmed, yes, I, we felt the dog was over here spotted. And finally, I think the last part of it, I just remember, I said, I see blue. I see blue. She's like, well, uh, blue as in what? I said, it's it's a building. Um, can you give me more details than that? Yes, this building is retail. It's it it's like a, a food place or something. She says, okay, I know where it is. I'm headed there now. She goes to the blue building. Uh, it was some kind of a food food restaurant or something, and the dog was found there. Wow. I mean, she actually went and said, there it is? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, was, she found yeah. the dog. The owner had to come because the dog had an injury and yeah. had to be rushed to the uh, animal hospital. But I think the dog was okay after wow. that. That's wonderful. I mean, there must be so many. Uh, I mean, like it's hard probably to get too emotionally about how many people come to you and say thank you for your help, this and that. Um, you know, how do you digest some of that kind of praise? Well, it, ba- it it balances out because some I don't find, you know, I try my best and for whatever reason, uh, I'm the first to admit that I don't, uh, the dog was never spotted and they were never found again. And um, I would say maybe that's, that's <clears throat> five, five percent. And I tell people that, I mean, it really depends on circumstances. We, I think it was a couple of years ago, there was a huge thing on dog fighting rings going on around the country. And I was asked to um, uh, find some of the dogs at, at some of these dog fighting rings. And they actually, I found out because I was sort of investigating it for this person. And I found out that they were going on not just in one state, but it was kind of like this uh this chain going on from state to state. And um, I remember finding a dog in one of those uh, for these people. And um, and I led them right to this area. And 
they found the dog and the dog was dropped off. It was dropped off by a car. There was a spray paint or something on it to color it. I think they, you know, they do all sorts of terrible things to get them, you know, in the dog fighting leagues. But they, for some reason, these people must have just felt they didn't need the dog and the the dog went and uh, never heard from the people again so <laughs> i mean it's like thank you you know it would be nice so my feeling about it is um it's kind of it is just a job it, it's something uh i know i can do and i have done i've done repeatedly for so many years um but yeah it does make me really happy because uh a lot of times people write on my Facebook page, like around Christmas and stuff like that, they'll send me a picture of them. In fact, there was one recently, um, this woman up in Pennsylvania, a picture of her with her dog that she would have never found if it wasn't for me. And I actually went this last Christmas, I went over to a client's house uh, about half hour away from here. And I found their dog many times because it's a beagle and it's always getting out. And uh, they invited me over for Christmas dinner. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I am uh, taking, they were taking pictures of me with the dog. And, and you know, this is a dog that I actually found. I mean, he could have been lost. He could have been um, run over. Um, I, I guess I just don't... I don't absorb it fully. I mean, it's a it's it's a big thing when you've saved so many of these. Yeah. You know? and I can see if it happened once, you're like, "Wow, I'm." But it happening all the time, it's like a, a football player who scores a touchdown. Yeah, okay, that's what I do. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Can you tell me one of uh, your stories about the one of finding a horse and how how that went about? Well, my first my first horse one was up in New Jersey. Um, it was for um, it, it was for a girl. She was like in her teens at the time, and um, funny enough, we became friends, and now I'm still friends with her. Um, she's in her twenties now, um, but I it wasn't just about rescuing her horse. It was also about, there was a whole bunch of other things. It was about the emotions going through this. And then um, eventually she had to find her horse a home because of circumstances with her after the horse was found. Uh, and the horse went to a good home. But, you know, <clears throat> it wasn't just one thing. I, I've, I've kind of counseled them on on many issues but the horse went missing um i was up in massachusetts at the time they were in new jersey and um horse just bucked out and escaped now i went down to the barn i actually <clears throat> on this case i actually drove uh three or four hours to where the horse went missing and i don't normally do that but in this case i just felt that i really needed to I spoke to, I arrived down there uh, to meet one of her friends and also um, the mom, her mom. And I spoke to the sheriff and he kind of looked at me like, oh, you know, who's this bozo? <laughs> um, but, you know, he looked at me and said, look, I, 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 I can bet you can do your work, but I bet this horse is dead. Okay. <laughs> I just don't feel he's alive. He was gone for, I don't know couple weeks or so until they found me and um i so i went down there and and i was driving around with uh with her friend uh all around the neighborhood and this and that and i kept seeing the horse kept seeing the horse kept seeing the horse uh there were people on horseback looking for the horse um there were people all over the place looking for the horse and finally they did find him in an area pretty similar to you know what I was what I was getting, and um, horse found. And I I remember what happened, so I helped them with the horse, and uh, then afterwards, um, <clears throat> I think we went out to get something to eat and stuff like that, and uh, and then the media. When we were gone, the media arrived, 
And somebody who was a psychic went over to the scene and actually was taking credit for the <laughs> investigation that I just did. Wow. That's, uh, that's definitely a strange one. <laughs> that was pretty bad. That was, that was, that was, I, I just felt, you know, hey, karma, take over here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I've been friends with them and the family, and I've done many readings for them over the years. I actually did a murder case down in that area, too. This one was uh, a, a girl who went missing. Um, I actually did speak to the family. Um, and I led the police, I led the detective on the case uh, throughout the area to do the search. I targeted certain people. I gave some descriptions. I gave them uh, houses, uh, streets, uh, wetlands, stuff like that. Talked about her personality, talked about her habits, things that she was going through. Uh, spoke to the mom about it. So I get through this whole thing. In fact, the detectives really were impressed. They they were really like, whoa, you know, we have not spoken to a psychic like this. And they were very hot in the case and they were getting there, getting there. And, you know, finally, the parents wanted to stop the investigation mm. until they got more evidence. And you got to understand it. It was a very sensitive um thing for the parents to go through. And I think there was a bit of denial there. They just felt, you know, maybe she ran away and, uh, you know, let's hope that she comes back one day. And I, I was saying to myself, God, wouldn't that be wonderful? You know, but I don't think so. I just didn't think she was alive. I knew she wasn't. She, her, you could sense that. Or, her uh, spirit was around her house. I, I knew it. And I was, you know, willing to really go through it and, and to solve the case. And But they dropped the case. So many years later, okay, uh, each year would go by and there was a page dedicated to her. And then there was an announcement every year, you know, she's never returned, she's never returned. And I think it's, oh, it's probably been about five or six years now. <clears throat> I felt she met the wrong person online. I felt they had something to do with it. Um, I actually gave a description of the area and there was a friend of the, you know, a friend of mine up there was actually doing the hiking and the tracking, and I would describe places. And, you know, um, I have lots of witnesses to that case that I was on, but I, I just feel bad that they just never, never had closure to this whole thing. And would we find closure? Um, I don't know. I think the evidence is still there. Yeah, I do. Have you had any full on like great relationships with working with the police or other detectives that work with you and like are mm -hmm. on, on the ball with you? Like kind of just like, OK, Todd, here we are. These are the new evidence that we got. What can you what can you throw our way? Yeah, I, there was a double murder case of two teenagers. Um, it, but I was asked to go on this case by the police. It, it's, um, it was like 10 years old. But but their their city never resolved the case, and and uh, the detectives were still on the case working on this. Um, I've been out there several times. Um, I I've uh, given them a a lot of clues, but you know we we've, we've got a. In fact, the person who did it is in custody in jail right now because he admitted that he will not tell the location of where the bodies are. And um, it's a very unusual case because mostly uh, there needs to be some incriminating evidence, and this was based on his testimony. But I can't, the frustrating part is, yes, I get along with them. I, I um, a group of police officers and, and detectives, and uh, occasionally, I will make a trip out there and, and go to lunch with them. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I um, I was vacationing, uh, oh God, last year and uh, was up in the area. I said, hey, you guys want to get together? And they okay. said, sure. 
I said, you know, I, I'm on vacation. I, I said, but but I've got to work. I, I just, I feel like I, I need to, can I help you guys? And they said, yes, you can. Can you talk to, uh, you know, can you talk to the, um, the, the woman's mother, the, the woman that died, her mom? Mm-hmm. Very, very, uh, you know, I said, okay, I will. So I spoke to her. Um, I, I wanted to give her details, some, some, you know, something that says, you know, oh, hey, this guy, you know, is picking up on something. And, um, and I also wanted to hear her, I wanted to hear her theory. Mm. Because that was, to me, um, <clears throat> being her mom, I felt she was very intuitive. I felt that she might have had some very good answers about this. And I was in agreement that the problem is we're talking about <clears throat> the suspect who uh, was uh, kind of like, you know, kind of like a gypsy going from place to place, uh, always around in different woods. He was a woodsy sort of person, uh, different areas. And you got hundreds of if not thousands of acres of, of different places. And I just, we did some digging. Um, we did some uh, swamp, swamp, you know, scouring uh, for bodies. We have not come up with the bodies yet. And I feel bad about it because, you know, if we resolve this case, it, it would mean an incredible amount and you know what i might just pick up one day and travel out that way again and um and 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 really really work hard on it and and see what i come up with but you know that's the thing about being a psychic is well how do you work hard on it i i I suppose when you're too engaged in a case and you're not coming up with something, mm-hmm. it can throw you off. It can it can make kind of a wall uh, against your clarity. So what I will do is there has been a good lapse of time. So maybe in a better frame of mind, just go out there. A fresh look, yes. Yeah, and have a fresh, fresh look. And you know, I'm I'm willing to do that. Um, a lot of people, what they don't know is I didn't I didn't charge them for my services. Um, they they did help out with uh, some food and uh, you know they did offer to you know pay for gas expenses this and that. But um, now I did that on my own. I I wanted to I wanted to help. Um, if it's a client, if it's like the family, then I'd probably have to charge for an appointment. But it's different. I'm trying to help the police, and I'm trying to uh, get their confidence. And um, but yeah, there's some um, there's other police that I I've uh, worked for who who I still know now, and I'm good friends with. So, do you ever um? you know, maybe stumped on something or, you know, like you say, come up against a wall. Does anything ever come revealed through dreams when you're like le- less, you know, awake and more just kind of in the dream state? Does anything happen during those times for you? Yeah. Um, I guess the thing about dreams is that dreams are a, um, dreams can give you a vision of something that might have happened or it can give you but normally the the sleeping dreams are are guided more by emotion than the subconscious and the psychic consciousness is is a little bit different than the subconscious mm-hmm. um it's kind of a window whereas the subconscious is more of going deeper into <clears throat> your mind um I've never revealed cases that way, but, um, you know, I have had uh, during times of real, you know, let's say it's late at night, I'm kind of half awake or something, and I I have done investigations on the phone for people um, in the middle of the night because... I, they're desperate, and uh, I found a missing man that way not too long ago up in, uh, what was he? He was up in Maryland, 
And, you know, I was, I was just um, 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. I was on the phone with her waiting till 1 a.m. till they actually found him. And they did wow. find him in a, in alive and in okay. So, Do you have any um, afterthoughts uh, about everything that we've been talking about today, just about past cases, what it's like to work with, you know, families? Well, I, I think that, I kind of think that people people that come to me or have come to me for a long time, they know that I'm not a know-it-all, that I'm not an ego. Um, and I, I'm, you know, very honest, open. Um, I'll tell them about my problem of the day or, you know, my truck was having issues or they know I'm human, <laughs> which, yeah. which, uh, is is good um and i'm also open to i guess other people who are intuitive as well and i will trust in them what is it like when you meet let's just say someone who's intuitive but they don't even know they're intuitive the yeah kind of- I, I i do try to help them i i try to um you know one of the, one of the things that helped me was confidence yeah. because you doubt you doubt you see something you figure out you're like no that didn't really happen did it so one of the things is to is to trust trust yourself uh to to have the confidence i oftentimes will will have that problem when i'm faced with the wrong situation or the wrong person it's kind of like should i say this should i not Mm -hmm. you know Sometimes by revealing that they're intuitive, if I tell them, Mm -hmm. it starts to make sense to them Mm. why it is the way they are. Some people might think something's wrong with me or why am I so emotional or why am I so sensitive or why am I sensing these things just by a simple acknowledgement. Yes, you're allowed to be psychic. I mean, it can be as simple as, you know, I just know I can't find the evidence, but I think my husband's cheating on me. Yes. You know, I think he's cheating on me. So I'll work with them. I'll work with them. And I I won't doubt them. I'll say, you know, I think you might have a point here. Um, And and then I, I will maybe give them some clues or this and that, and then we'll wait for evidence. Yeah, I worked on one of those recently. Um where it's kind of like i can't really help the situation but i'll wait for them you know can you hire a private detective to at least investigate uh you know his work or where he's working and see you know just do a one-night surveillance you know and to see if he's in contact with somebody on the outside and you know that kind of thing i am kind of i call myself a proof psychic i'm always waiting for some some level of proof to come through um so we can say okay let's go to the next step here. yeah you can move on from from that instead of stu- stumbling like okay it's been three years is he still cheating on you well i feel it in my gut but i can't prove it just get rid of him yeah. <laughs> it goes back to what i have always believed that that usually your first impression your first gut reaction you might know a truth and then all of a sudden your mind will say, nah, he wouldn't do that or she wouldn't do that or blah, blah, blah. The senses of the emotions, I guess, are very quick, quicker than our thoughts. So they pick up on things of the psychic world. I think that's where a lot of it comes from. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I it's kind of funny because, you know, if it's a love reading, which <laughs> you know, I don't like doing them so much, but I do them. I do, yeah. you know, relationship readings and this and that. And, you know, they're going into the the emotions and this and that i'm sitting there you know god really you want my help on love i don't have a clue about love okay um i mean i've had doubts i'm like you know maybe should i do something else with my life and and uh people would they they would go crazy um oh my god you should hear these people uh you know with this uh pandemic virus going on you oh, know yeah. they're like all oh, they're all checking up on me they're like don't go out of the house don't go out of the house don't go. we need yeah. you we need you i'm like oh my god i said i have to i have to go um you know i have to go get coffee at the store 
<laughs> uh, yeah, it's yeah. That that's that's we could we could find out uh, Todd's information on the uh, last podcast that was done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a little a little um, a little out there, but you know, it's really weird. I've had a lot of appointments with people since that podcast, and I can tell you about a uh, hundred percent of them actually agree with what yeah. I was talking about there. I think a lot of people know that, you know, um, yeah. but anyway, it's all strange. Well, Todd, um, we will end this podcast now and everybody out there stay safe and stay good. Todd, you want to leave your, um, contact information at the end again, as we always like to do. Um, well, if you want to contact me intuitively, just, uh, Focus your mind on on my thoughts. No, I'm just kidding. No, you know what? The <laughs> best way to get a hold of Todd is smoke signals. He loves- I'll call the fire department on you. <laughs> I mean, if you go to if you go to Google and you just put Todd Siegel, it will give you my uh, website. But if you want to go to psychic dot com, that is my website. I go live on my Facebook page, and I I do it as often as I can. Um, not you know, whenever. Um, and I answer questions for free for people. Um, not a lot of psychics do Free? That. Free? Oh, my God. There's doors knocking down already. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a little hard to navigate because within about 15 or 20 minutes, I've got 200, 200 <laughs> questions on there. And I feel so bad. I want to answer everybody's questions. So, I, yeah. I mean, I like to do it. And I made a lot of customers from that because I actually, I've, done some good readings for them and then they come back to me also during this pandemic i lowered my prices a little bit to try to help people out because yeah that's nice. a lot of people out of work right now and that's why you're here to help people figure out if they're going to have a job next do you think i'll have a job in the future todd can you see anything from you know me? what i i've been kind of like uh criticized by some of my friends who are intuitive too you know because i'm i'm actually very optimistic that things will get better soon yes, with the yes. situation and people will have their jobs and we we can just go on um but you know then i talked to people who said no no this is gonna this is gonna be awful it's gonna be years it's gonna be depression it's gonna be wow uh, people going crazy but i don't believe that so i hope i'm right Let's let's think about this on a big scale of mass psychology, like almost self-fulfilling prophecy. We could almost create our own reality. And if we're all thinking negative, we'll bring negativity. But if we're going to bring the positive, we're here to help each other. We're here to support each other, not giving into a fear because fear destroys any type of positive. So well, that's why it's, it's all happening to cause fear. Yeah. And so picking up on the fears, just falling into the hands of it all. Which you'll hear everything on March twenty fourth podcast. So yeah, I don't think we named it because I was we were trying to be sensitive as to not emphasize the fact that we were talking about the pandemic. Psychic Zone up with Todd Siegel on March twenty fourth. Yeah, and I do feel um, there's it's going to kind of change our world after this. I hate to say, you know, our whole attitude. Yeah. So we'll come into this again. Stay tuned, everybody. And you've heard it here. You're with us and you're never alone in the psychic, in the psychic zone. zone.